story this one on the back of the sun rob beasley's got it come and get me city he says that he's going to be the new or the next manchester city manager and will get the job in the summer it's a hundred percent according to his source in the paper paul what do you make of that because man city have always consistently said that they're not talking to guardio they're not going to talk to him but this says very very differently sure i mean they have to say that and of course the, the starting gun was when Guardiola said the other day that he would definitely return to management in the summer. You know, that removed any doubt about it. And, and logically, uh, that would, will return will come in this country. And the Premier League um, is the best managerial merry-go-round I think I've ever seen because Mourinho and Guardiola are both on it. Mourinho will definitely leave Real Madrid at the end of this season. Guardiola is coming back from his sabbatical. Therefore, we're all trying to, to fit them into places in the Premier League. Manchester City um, and Guardiola makes a lot of sense. And, you know... City will deny it, I'm sure, but at the same time, City have regressed a bit this season, and if they don't win the league, they will have regressed quite clearly because um, knocked out of the Champions League in the group stages, um, if they surrender their title back to Manchester United, say, then Mancini's in real trouble. It doesn't matter how many defenders he's got in the, in the ground at the Etihad Stadium. That is a regression, mm -hmm. and if there's a regression sure. with that amount of money involved, then his job is on the line. Um, okay. Guardiola is the most sought-after manager in world football without moving a muscle he's you know he's hanging out in new york and um and i think city would go for him if they give up on mancini so yeah. the story does fundamentally make sense yeah sure and, and he is the most wanted manager in the world no question about it w was it significant at all that at the ballon d'or when when messi won the uh, the world player of the year award for the fourth time that guardiola when he was interviewed spoke in english uh, <laughs> possibly. I mean, he's very good English as yeah. well, should we say? Well, I mean, we've all been to Guardiola press conferences and he speaks very good English, you know. He takes four questions from us. Well, he's been living in New York as well, yeah. hasn't he, yeah. for the last yeah. six months? Or... Yeah, and uh, English is the, is it still the <laughs> language of uh, yeah, <laughs> FIFA? Uh, no, I don't think that's particularly significant, Neil, but, I, but I, I think the logical challenge for him now is to come to England, although there might be a job in, an it in Italy that appeals to him, but I think fundamentally he'd like to test himself here. Yeah, is, is he been for the Champions League because of the... Uh, uh, City because of their failure presumably and, and his, his incredible success yes. with, with Barcelona winning 14, uh, also, 14 uh, trophies out of the 18 well. that they competed in. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, that's true. Um, other reasons as well, I mean City are, uh, uh, have, have developed a policy of long-termism which mm. is uh, long and short-termism combined but I mean they, they are very serious about uh, laying down roots and being around for a long, long time. Um, and eventually becoming the best team in Manchester um, on a long-term basis. Um, but uh, so th there's that, and of course then there's the obvious thing of the presence of uh, two former Barcelona very senior executives already at the Etihad. Mm -hmm. So um, I think that Rob's story, although interesting, is, is a fairly common assumption. Um, uh, but Chelsea with the other team, it's not, it's not just Man City that yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, Chelsea well, the, the, the other the team. The one thing that we've been uh, fairly certain of is that he'll come back, although Bayern have been credited with an interest, but the one thing we've been fairly certain of is that he'll come back here and, and Manchester City have, have become the favourites, although <laughs> I, I, I think that uh, when a chap's only been manager of Barcelona, managing the most talented squad uh, that any of us can remember, uh, it's a bit of a gamble. Mm. You thought it was easy, didn't you? But it's, uh... I never said easy at all. No, no. no. It's, yeah, the, the, you press, you know, you're <laughs> terrible. I'm never going to speak to the press again. No, the, the, I, I, I might have said easy, but I mean, what I really meant was that managing the, the most gifted squad uh, is it, it, a bit like, it's a, it's a bit like being a jockey. Um, you just have to make sure you don't fall off. And, and uh, Guardiola did. If Guardiola was a great manager uh, for what he did at Barcelona, then Tito Villanova is already looking better. Um, yeah, certainly had a great so, start to the I mean, season. You can't, I, I just think to, to rush to judgment of someone, and it may well be that Pep Guardiola is the best manager yeah. in the world, but to rush to judgment on the basis of what you do at Barcelona is... Uh, I'm, uh, yeah, yeah, I'm sorry I can't help judge someone who's won 14 trophies out of the 18 they're competing but how, how will this Man City fans feel about this story Oli? because they, they've got a, a real uh, a special relationship with Roberto Mancini he's won the FA Cup he won the league title last season they chant his name at every single game and yet Mancini seems always seems to be under pressure and it always seems to be this man Guardiola who is linked with this job yeah 
Well, they're right to chant his name at every single game. I mean, I think he's uh, he's achieved an awful lot there, and he's brought them, you know, their first title for many decades. Um, and their loyalty to him is to be admired. I, 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 don't, I don't think he'll be there at the start of next season. Um, I agree with Paul. I think City have, um, have regressed a little bit. I think their failure to get out of the Champions League group, even though it was an incredibly strong group, you know, that has to be said, was, was a big failure that I, I don't think would have um, done him any favours at all. And um, I think that even though the City hierarchy have been loyal to him, I think probably time is running out for him and um, I, I do I, again I agree with Paddy about the long termism and I think that's I think that's crucial in terms of this particular story that we're talking about I think Guardiola is hot property if it's a choice say between City and Chelsea I, common common sense says that he would look at City and see a, a club that has a plan has a structure, is planning for the future, they've got this new campus, yeah. you know, stability. a place where he would be given time. On the to, other hand, to, if he just needs a quick injection of cash, then Chelsea's the place, isn't yeah, but it? He gets Easy the, money. But he gets the injection of cash here as well, you know, he gets he gets everything at City, whereas Chelsea, he could be out of there in six months. Well, that's yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. He'd be out of there with his... Well, he would, but I suspect, but I mean, I I suspect I that Guardiola... Not, uh, I don't not, think he's that kind of guy. I don't think Guardiola's about that. I mean, we may be romanticising him, but yeah. I don't think he's about that. He's and I think, I think he would look at a longer-term project with, you know, with more interest. Um, if you look at it from the owner's point of view as well at City, I mean, he's, he's a very charismatic uh, figure and he's a, he's yep. a kind of statesman-like manager as yeah. well, isn't he? Mm. And, and, you know, they are very conscious of their image and so on. They, know, they would know that Mourinho would probably poke somebody in the eye within the first three months, although he's a brilliant yeah, manager. Yeah. With, with Guardiola, I think you get this, you get this uh, you gravitas get, and, and you aura get, that yeah. would, that you would help the, City promote themselves. The intense competitiveness, mm. but also the dignity. Mm. And, of course, you get the philosophy. Mm. Um, well, you certainly I mean, got the imprint. Why, yeah. why aren't we talking about Guardiola and Arsenal? Because an interesting yeah. survey um, on Friday, John Cross in the, in the Daily Mirror wrote about this on Saturday morning. That's this the black scarf movement, which is associated with the uh, with some of the supporters there. Uh, only five percent believe that that Arsene Wenger is still still the right man for the job, and around 40, 41 percent believe he's still the right man, but has to change his ways mm -hmm. in order to stay at Arsenal. Why aren't we talking about Guardiola and Arsenal and if, if supporters at Arsenal really feel that way about Wenger? Mm. Well, interestingly, when, when Arsenal played Barcelona in the Champions League, I, I, I remember clocking the fact that Guardiola was incredibly complimentary about Arsenal. Yeah. He almost talked about them as a, as a blood brother, you know. Yeah. Um, they think mm. the way we do. What a marvellous club, you know. Look at the way they develop players. And um, I remember thinking then, well, maybe mm. Arsenal will be on his yeah. radar mm. one day when Wenger step, stands down. But... Um, I don't think it would be now because there's just too much to do. Um, if you, if Guardiola looked at that starting eleven that will play Manchester City later, I bet he'd probably think, well, I'll, uh, four of those, four or five of those players I'll keep and I'll build with, mm -hmm. but the other six I'm going to have yes. to replace. Yeah. Uh, he'd have to replace those players with a board that doesn't appear to want to play the game that the other big clubs play, i.e., you know, spending big and, and lavishing money in all directions. And the wrangle with Walcott over his contracts as well. But you surprised? He's, not, he's, not, a, he's yeah. not a miracle worker, Guardiola, and I think Paul's right. He, you know, he, he's like anybody else to an extent. He, he needs money, and uh, there's no evidence really that the Arsenal board will give him any money. No, OK, but Arsenal, they haven't been shy in paying big wages in the past, but are you surprised that the fans, the way the fans feel about Wenger, this, this, this survey of Arsenal supporters that, uh, that was in the mirror yesterday? Well, I'm not, I'm not surprised anymore, but I'm, you know, I don't, I, I think that they're wrong. I mean, I, you know... I was I'm, about to ask whether you voted, Oli, but... Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe in a, I'm in a minority, but I think that Wenger is doing the... Uh, is, you know, he's made some mistakes, every manager makes mistakes, but uh, particularly in the transfer market, but I think he's still the best man for the job, I think... They're not on a level playing field with Man City, Chelsea, Manchester United in terms of the money he's had to spend. Um, I think he's doing a fantastic job. I d I'm not quite sure. You know, I, I think if Arsenal fans expect their team to be challenging for the league every season at the moment, they're, they're misguided. I think he's the best man for the job. I think if he leaves, they'd find out quite how good he is. He was. If, if, if his, presuming his successor is, given, is not given any more 
um, funds than he was. Yeah, with, with surveys like this, uh, as a final point, Paul, will they cause divisions in, in the ranks of Arsenal supporters? Because we saw at Bradford when they lost in the Capital One um, Cup quarter-final, there were, there were arguments between supporters on the, on the terraces or in the stands at, at that game. Yeah. This afternoon against Manchester City, if it doesn't go well for them at the Emirates, could we see more of this? Yeah, I think you'll see an increasing split between the, the Wenger loyalists who believe that um, you know, his way is the right way still and that there will be jam tomorrow and, and those who just think that the whole experiment has, has, you know, has run out of steam and that they, the club needs to move on and find somebody else and say goodbye to Wenger. But you, you, can see that, you can see those divisions, but they will increase, obviously, if results don't uh, pick up. Yeah, it's also it's part of the knee-jerk, isn't it? Wenger out, you know, Wenger out, Rafa out. It's like... <laughs> It's, it's only just <laughs> got there, Ollie. Well, it's kind of, uh, it's just this, this knee-jerk stuff. Like, I mean, as Paul said, if we lose, if Arsenal lose today, it will start up again. Then they'll, they'll win a game and it will go away. I mean, it's like the short-termism short yeah. in the Premier League is becoming more and more exaggerated. Why, why is it? Because managers, managers always say that. They've got the same argument as you, Ollie. But when we say in the same 10 years, 20 years, 30 years ago, the supporters want instant success. They want their team to be winning trophies, winning cups, winning the Premier League title, winning the league title in the past. Yeah, and look, I, I'm not saying I haven't got sympathy for Arsenal fans in, 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 in you know, that they've had to adapt to a situation where they were challenging Manchester United and as Paddy said, actually, in many ways, were, were, had, had threatened uh, Liverpool initially, their hegemony and everything. And, you know, they've had to adapt to a situation where they're competing for the Champions League places and that's the hype, their ambition. So I understand that. I understand their frustration, but I think that you, if you look at the bigger picture, you can see that Wenger is, Wenger is still doing a, a great job. Yeah. Where, he's, where he's exposed, Neil, is in, is in by bringing in too many substandard players. I mean, yeah. um, you know, that, that's the area you'd look at and say, well, why has his judgment led him to think that, you know, Shamak was going to be a player and Andrew Santos and these people and Mertesacker at, at centre-back, you know. That's where Arsenal have been shopping in that mid-range but is, uh, that his, is that his fault that they're shopping? That, that, I mean, that's no, the crucial also... argument. Is uh, I think Arsenal fans who want him out say he's doing this, he's doing that deliberately. He could spend more, but he won't. Whereas I think, I mean, there's a reason why he's shopping in that mid-range bracket, and that's because he hasn't got the money. So well, well, there's 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 he's having that, to take gambles. There's yeah. a sense that he's still living in the past a little bit here, Paddy, because he toyed with the idea of bringing Thierry Henry back this this January.